Hello there, I'm Mark and I post graphic tutorials like this every week, so please consider subscribing to my little YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about masks and how we can mask layers in Affinity Photo. So let's get started. Here I am in Affinity Photo for desktop. It's very similar for iPad as well. So we got three layers right now. I'm going to select the second layer and click mask. This is this little icon below the layer panel. As you can see, it added a blank white mask to my selected layer. Now I can select layer or the mask for the layer. I will pick the mask and simple brush. So I'm using brush tool, very simple, basic brush, black color. And let's see what happens if I add black color to my mask. As you can see, I kind of create a hole inside this layer and I can see the layer below with the tiger. So by adding black color to your mask, you kind of hiding the layer. If I hide enough layer, I can see the layer below. All of that is happening because I'm painting black color on the mask layer. I'm not using eraser tool right now. So if I switch black to white color, then I can get my layer back. So this is undestructive way of hiding part of the layer. Because it's still there, I'm simply hiding with black color and unhiding with white color. Of course, you can get like semi-transparent effect if you use gray color. So we're working on this black to white spectrum here. White color, everything is visible. Black is to totally transparent. So using that, using this layer mask, we can easily blend two pictures together simply by hiding part of one picture. All right, let's get rid of this mask and try something different. I can start with selection. So let's go with a quick selection here in the center. So if I start with selection first. All right, just random selection around this area will do. All right. And if I got selection like this and if I click the add layer mask icon right now, I will get a layer mask with this selection shape straight away. It will be not just a simply a blank mask. So let's take a look. All right, we got selection and now I'm going to click the very same icon over here at layer mask. And it's mask out everything non selected. So the selected area stay everything else is out. Everything else is paint black, but we want kind of opposite of that, right? So we can go to selection and then we can invert selection. So you can always invert your selection. In the selection panel above, there's simply invert selection button. When you invert selection, you will be able to see that now after that, everything else is selected. So if I add mask to it, Everything else is kept and this little hole is empty and I can kind of fit my second picture into that space. This is mask out. As you can see, we got mask here. Everything is on mask. I can still pick the brush. I can still add white or black color to modify this mask. So it's non-destructive way. That's kind of the biggest advantage of using masks versus, let's say, normal eraser tool. We are not deleting pixels, we are hiding and unhiding them by using black and white color on this special mask layer. All right, there are a few more things we can do with that. So let's grab a shape. And now we are going to put this image inside the shape using mask to below feature. So let's just position the shape here. Now I can right click on the shape and select mask to below. 
and now the layer below get a mask based on that shape it's inside the circle as you can see I can even click on that shape later and modify the shape itself move it around and this way you can easily mask out objects using different layers in my case that was a shape layer all right let's delete that what else can we do with this very handy mask feature? We already talked about selection, but there is one more thing we can do with selection. So if you do very classic selection of the object, so I'm using quick selection tool right now to select this tiger roughly. Let's just do it quickly. You can get new layer with a mask as output of your selection refinement. Take a look. Alright, a little bit here. As you know, there is a refine button over here. So after I click that, I will see preview of my selection. From here I can add or remove stuff from selection. So this red color indicate that this area will be removed or hidden. Everything red is gone. It's my backdrop. I can add extra red color later, as you can see now. I'm adding this during the refinement process. I can also erase some of this red color by marking this as foreground, as my main object. I don't want to have transparencies in my tiger here. All right, let's be quick, not too precise here and here as well. All right, and let's say our selection is ready and take a look. Now we got few different output options and there's also a new layer with mask. That's the best output option we can get. Apply and I will give a duplicate of this layer with the tiger but this time with a mask on it. As you can see, there is this little rectangle, black and white rectangle next to it. There's a mask applied based on the selection we got. So now I can easily use that to blend my different objects, change backdrop of something. And the biggest advantage is we still got the whole layer here. We didn't erase the backdrop. The backdrop is simply masked. So if I select mask and then pick black or white brush, I can make changes to my mask like this. This part is gone. I can repaint it with white color now. So that's give you like great way of uh, like editability of your objects later on. Really late in the project you can go back and add or remove something without worrying about being destructive like with eraser tool. The last thing we can do with mask, we can also put gradient on it. So we got blank mask and now I'm using gradient tool. This is simple gradient from white to black. And as you can guess, white is visible, black is totally invisible and everything in between will be kind of like graduation between that. So we are losing visibility slowly until the black color. That's very handy if you want to fade something away. All right. So keep in mind, you can also put a gradient in your mask. I hope this tutorial was helpful. There's a lot more we can do with mask, but I hope this will help you to understand the whole thing better. All right. Thank you for today. And I hope I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.